everyone, I'm Logan Nicholson, this is Australian Astronomy, and today I will be doing a review of the Takahashi MT-160 Newtonian Reflector Telescope. So an overview of this scope, it has a 1000mm focal length and a primary mirror diameter of 160mm. So 6 inch plus 10 millimeters. It's natively f6, but with the reducer it's f4.8 at 776 millimeters. With the extender it's at f8 at uh, 1330 millimeters. I picked this one up on ice and space for 1500 Australian dollars, and surprisingly it is 30 years old. Yes, 30 years old. That's a lot older than me. So, here's a list of good things about the telescope that I've found in my experience with using it over about a year or so. So, first of all, obviously is the amazing Takahashi quality of everything about this scope. It just screams quality. Um, the optics are spectacular. Uh, reportedly 120th wave figuring, which is really good compared, say, if you compare that to an average 6 inch, which would be around 1 8th, which means you get the very sharpest details when imaging or uh, using for visual. The optics of the reducer and corrector as well are great as far as I can tell which is a, a good thing. Another huge pro with this telescope is that there is not a single piece of plastic in the build that I could find at all. It's all steel. The tube is steel, the spider is steel, the everything is steel and glass really so it's absolutely built like a tank and it's amazing just how high quality the build is. I've driven three hour trips uh, to a dark side and back and the collimation has held perfectly which is really amazing. The scope is still pretty much pristine after 30 years of use by other people who have been using it. Um, the optics aren't uh, damaged or re need recoding at all, which is really a surprise when you consider most Chinese telescopes these days would need recoding after about 10 or 15 years. The focuser on this thing is also really high quality. I fitted a stepper motor to this focuser for a DIY autofocuser, but, but it's still great with or without PC control. It's real. The focuser is so smooth. It's 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 just a great focuser. And another minor good thing about this telescope is the secondary size is huge. So really, it could take pretty much any camera that you want to use with this telescope. Another pro with this telescope is the uh, the flexibility when choosing your focal lengths. You could use the reducer and get 750 millimeters, which is a good focal length for most nebulas. You could use a thousand millimeters if you need just a little bit of extra reach for, say, smaller-ish nebulas. Or you could use the F8 corrector to get images of small-ish galaxies that really need that little bit of extra focal length. So it's now time for the cons. Um, this telescope really starts to show its age when you look at these. So because of the build quality, this thing weighs an absolute ton. Just the tube alone is 9 kilograms, which is ridiculous when you consider a 6 inch is normally about mm, 2 or 3 kilograms. So when you add on your uh, reducer or corrector and DSLR guiding system, 
you basically need at least an EQ6 to be able to use this for imaging. Another con, which is acceptable really, is the cost. 1500 Australian dollars is a lot as well when you consider that a normal 6 inch is around 300 Is A pro slash con is all the accessories that you can buy for this telescope. All the accessories you can get with this scope are great, but it's what's not so great is that every single accessory is $90 US, which is ridiculous for a small piece of metal. And you pretty much have to buy their accessories because the focuser is threaded so it's not universal at all. But really, I haven't found this too much of an issue because I can just buy threaded accessories off eBay somewhere and that it's usually not too much of an issue. A minor issue is the lack of mounting options for guiding systems. On my telescope at least, it only came with a single uh, one and a quarter inch camera thread screw in the clamshell, which is kind of unfortunate for flexure in, the, in guiding, but I've found, I've actually seen no flexure, even with a sing, only a single mounting point, which is kind of surprising. A rather minor con is that it doesn't have a primary mirror fan, which means my primary mirror, I've seen it jewed up a lot of times, which is normally something you don't see at all in Newtonian telescopes. And speaking of primary mirror, the primary collimation system is absolutely confusing. It just, because there's no manual for this, because it's so old, you pretty much have to figure out how to do the primary collimation by yourself with these weird knobs and screws, which is kind of like figuring out a Rubik's Cube. Uh, a point where this scope really shows its age is that it doesn't have a dual speed focuser. But reportedly I've heard that dual speed focusers didn't even exist back then, which is a really major con. So it might sound like there's a lot of cons with this telescope. But really, it's still a great telescope for visual or imaging. The only use case I can see for this telescope, with there being so many other 6-inch cheap telescopes around, is if you want that really little extra bit of quality from a really high-quality primary mirror. But otherwise, there's no real use case for this telescope, in my opinion. Especially for imaging, since there are so many uh, problems with it. A 6 inch or 8 inch f5 telescope would make more sense now. You can see most of the pictures I've taken with this telescope on my Instagram at lognik04 and judge the quality of them for yourself. about this rare telescope. Thanks for watching.